Hi, Hi everyone. everyone. Welcome to the August Garden Tour. Camera guys behind the camera as usual. Hello. We're mic'd up tonight. We always love chit-chatting and having fun on our garden tours. Hope you enjoy it too. But we are kind of winding things down for the summer. Well, we aren't winding things down here, but summer is winding down. For many of you northern gardeners, you might be reaching the end of your warm weather growing season. You southern gardeners though, plenty of time left to grow warm weather veggies. And I want to start up here on the kitchen garden right near the house because I'm kind of switching some things over. I pulled out some beans in here that had reached the end of their life and I popped in a whole bunch of new vegetables. This is the Smart Pots long, I think it's a six foot long raised bed. Love growing it here right on the deck. It's a really nice little handy spot for it. But I popped in some new pepper plants. So now is a great time to put in new plants take out the old and put, him some, put in some new plants so you can get, still get some more growth and a harvest out of your growing season. And I don't remember what this variety is, but the cool thing is there's already little peppers forming, which means in Southern California here, I'll probably be able to grow peppers into the winter. Now, along with the end of the summer, does come some issues, lots of heat, Usually the bugs and diseases start coming in. And I wanna show you here on this pepper, while there's some that are growing really well, I always put an extra because usually there's some that end up looking like this. Something is chowing down here on this pepper. Not sure what it is, uh, but we will be uh, spraying this or probably just giving it a good little rinse with water to get some of those bugs off. But right next to it here, I put in some new basil. Um, this I started kind of, uh, I want to say maybe uh, maybe six weeks or so ago, popped it in here and it is growing beautifully here in the late summer. So this time in the summer, you really want to be thinking about what to plant next. Get some other veggies going. Beans, squash, cucumbers are always good things to pop in and harvest in about six weeks. But we might have a little bit of harvesting to do tonight as we go along. We just did a huge tomato and cucumber harvest. Hopefully you caught that video, made a delicious tomato cucumber salad. But we got a few more tomatoes left here and hoping for a brand new crop once we harvest. This is the chocolate stripes. We love this tomato. That looks good. It's so beautiful and totally ready. And I put that little one gallon Smart Pots on to protect it from the squirrels. They run back along the deck here. So uh, it's really annoying when they just take a little munch out of your tomato plant or your tomato right when it's ripe. The struggle is real. <laughs> it is totally real. So we'll probably eat this one for dinner tonight. We're actually gonna grill burgers after this. And this is a beautiful, nice, meaty slicing tomato. It'll be delicious on our burgers. And case in point, after I harvested a couple of weeks ago off this plant, um, I, I fertilized it, gave it a little mid-season boost, and there's already some brand new tomatoes coming on. So Jerry, if you want to get in there and look at these brand new little greenies in there. So once you harvest and prune your plants, if you prune off your any diseases or dried leaves or whatever, give it a little boost, give it some worm tea, the Vermistera Vitality, um, even fish fertilizer, good dirt plant food, give it a nice little oomph because now's the time to do that little boost so you can get one more last crop out of your plants. Now I like to kind of have some things available as I pull plants out to have something else to put in its place. There are a bunch of, I think it was mustard greens or something like that in here that dried up. We've had some really hot temperatures this week. So um, I grabbed these little flowers and I can't remember the name of these. I know they're really common. So let me know if you know what the names are and pop them in the little Smart Pots wall saddles. I love the wall saddles because they give a lot more growing space here. If you're growing in a small area on a deck or a patio, they're perfect. They kind of hang over the edge. Got some strawberries going on the other little pocket. And then I love the bright splash of flowers. The, um, this particular flower, whatever the name yeah, it's is. It's really colorful. Super colorful. And then down in here, um, the zinnias are going crazy. Hopefully you caught that video. You want to prune your zinnias back. Um, actually when they're about this size, cut them right here. So they kind of branch out and it will encourage um, side shoots, more stems and definitely more blooms. You want to keep those zinnias blooming as long as possible because they really, really bring in the pollinators. So really loving the color and just how fun and inviting it looks here in the kitchen garden on the deck. Now, like I mentioned, we've had a lot of hot weather, sometimes up into the triple digits, but pretty much it's gonna be in the high 90s for at least another 10 days. So 
when the heat comes in, we always get the spider mites. And this uh, tomato plant is not looking so great right now. And you know what? We got to keep it real here at Cali Kim. Not everything works out. Mm -hmm. I get pests and diseases as well. But what you want to do at this time of the year is if you can, stay up on your pruning of your tomato plants. So we're still getting tomatoes off it. The plant's not looking so good, but that's okay. We actually have some new little blossoms right here. But keep these yellowing leaves trimmed off as much as possible. And if you can stay on top of it, um, that's always good because it starts from the bottom. It moves its way up often when you get a disease on your tomato plants. And the more you can keep it pruned and trimmed up, the less it will spread. But eventually, most tomato plants do give in to disease, so don't feel too bad if it's happening to you. But the cool thing is, lots of tomatoes, these sun golds, are literally like eating candy. Now, one strategy you can do with the pests, before you spray it with any kind of organic pesticide, spray it down with water. I've been spraying uh, plants in my garden down about once a week just to get the webs, the spiders, the aphids off, and it really does seem to help. And I gotta tell you guys over here, the lemon tree. I couldn't wear a dress with lemons all over it without talking about the lemon tree. <laughs> um, but these are in 30 gallon smart pots and man, how they have ever grown since we transplanted them. Gosh, Jerry, was that maybe a year or so ago? I think so. A little more than a year ago? Yeah. And we've gotten several lemons off them. I actually sprayed this plant down with water and this lemon kind of fell off. It's not quite ripe. See how it has all that green on it? But if I take this into the house, sit it on the counter, it will ripen up and we will use this in our recipe. So really looking forward to lots more lemons over the next several months. Now let's head on down to the main part of the garden, but on our way down, I gotta show you what happened to my sunflowers here. I love growing sunflowers along the fence here. It looks so such a pretty border, except no sunflower head, no sunflower head. <laughs> No sunflower head all the way down. There's only one left. And take a wild guess what chowed off my sunflower heads. And if you guess squirrels, you are right. They love to come up here and just grab the heads, eat the seeds. And you know what? While it's really frustrating, and I'm sure you're very frustrated about squirrels as well, it actually has kept them, hopefully, off of my tomatoes. So I'd rather have them eat the sunflowers and leave the tomatoes alone. You know what? You win some, you lose some, right? These ones Always. the squirrels got. All right, let's head on down to the main part of the garden. Now here on the hill garden, we have quite a few exciting things going on. First off, the zucchini, going crazy. Now my intention was to grow it vertically, and we've talked about that on other garden tours that you might have seen. So I have it here planted um, underneath a tomato cage, and the whole idea is to feed it up as it grows vertically into the cage, kind of trim the bottom stems, so that you can grow a lot more in a little bit of space. But, but <laughs> I can see it from here. I didn't quite keep up on the uh, feeding it up vertically. Um, but we, we do have a lot to harvest anyway, regardless of if it's growing vertically or semi-vertically. So it's always fun to pull these out because you never quite know what you're going to find under a zucchini gonna, plant. Are you pulling that out right now? I actually oh, am. I think you did. I'm going to pull it out because why not put these on our burgers as well, right? Or yep. maybe these can be the burgers. This one's actually a pretty good size, but we have another one in here <laughs> that I think we'll be making some lasagna. This thing's huge. Zucchini lasagna, Let's that see is. If I can get this in the shot. <laughs> or zucchini bread. These things quickly get out of control. Yeah, they do. If you've grown zucchini before, you know there's usually no shortage of zucchini. But one of my favorite ways to uh, cook the big ones here is to slice them up and make lasagna just like you normally would, but replace the zucchini for the noodles. So it's a lot healthier, and I think it's a whole lot tastier. So we're gonna have to make that, probably not tonight because we're grilling, yeah. but maybe this weekend. So the monthly garden tour is always a really fun time to give updates on plants and videos that we've done throughout the month. But one of my favorites to show you every month is the passion fruit. So if you guys are new to our channel, you might not know that this plant started as a tiny cutting. I'm not kidding you That's guys. That's right. Probably about, I don't know if I can pick this off or not, but it was probably about this big when I got it from Nisha, our live stream moderator. I forgot about Remember that. Remember that? About three years ago. And look at it now. It's totally covering this archway. Makes a really pretty entrance to the hill garden, but they're finally getting ripe. So I'm very excited about it. We've been harvesting a few here and there and it ha they haven't been all ripe at once. Let me just show you here what's happening is they start off green like this one over here. Hang on. Okay. 
and then they turn this beautiful purple color like this one here and then you know they're ripe when they just fall off the vine or if you touch them and they fall off this one has a little bit of a tug to it still so it's not quite ripe it usually is a deeper purple color but I come out here in the mornings and sometimes they're just kind of all over this little walkway so let me just show you here what's fallen over the past couple of days and I'm going to pick them up and then we're going to uh, cut one open so you can see how absolutely beautiful they are. Now these ones aren't super purple yet, but they will ripen sitting inside on the countertop. So we just picked up several passion fruit. There's probably 10 here that fell off the vine. And I think this one is looking very promising. When they're ripe, they're also very, very light, which is kind of crazy. So let's cut this open. Such a beautiful tropical fruit. I've actually trimmed this vine back several times just to control and manage the size. Wow, look at all the juice that came out of that. Sheesh. So pretty. It's got a really bright orangish yellow center. Nice and juicy. The seeds are kind of like pomegranate seeds. You can eat them. They're nice and crunchy. And we've actually been putting them on top of yogurt. Or I just eat them fresh right out of the shell. <laughs> They're kind of tart. Now yeah. Jerry's not a huge passion fruit fan. Yeah, they're pretty tart. So I guess that just leaves more for me. But, oh my gosh, the aroma. I wish you guys could smell it out here. It smells like a tropical paradise. It's absolutely delicious. So make sure you let me know if you've ever grown passion fruit, what variety you're growing, and how you like to eat it too. These are so yummy. So the hill garden is quickly turning into the hill jungle. It really needs trimmed up and pruned up. But you know what? I love how it looks right now. The sunflower jungle is kind of a nice little shady spot. I like it. I love it. But before we look at that, I have to show you the watermelon. Now this month is the time to really reap the rewards of all of your hard work. And believe me, the watermelon, for me personally, is one of the biggest rewards of the summer. And this thing is giant. <laughs> it, it is. I think it must grow every single day, Jerry. I think so too. We filmed it a couple weeks ago and it was not even this big. So this is the Jubilee watermelon. Remember we did a little sling with the netting. It's getting bigger and heavier by the day. And I wanted to check with you guys here to see if it just might be ripe. So if you remember from our sugar baby, remember what the sign of ripeness is? If you said the tendril, you're absolutely right. So we're gonna check the tendril on this uh, mammoth Jubilee melon. So what you look for is the stem closest to the melon, which is right here. Follow that up and then look for the tendril that's closest to that stem. And that would be this one right here. Can you see how that tendril is green and tender? So that means this melon is not ripe. So think about this Jubilee, how big it is right now. When that tendril is ripe, it's gonna be that much bigger. It's gonna be so much fun to harvest. So make sure you subscribe and stay tuned because we're gonna be harvesting this baby, hopefully Ooh, within a couple of weeks. That's gonna be fun. Now, one reason why I love the Jubilee melon, this is from my melon seed collection, is because it's a disease resistant variety. Now look at these leaves here, you guys. There is virtually, in fact, I don't see any disease or spots on these leaves. They're absolutely beautiful. The plant looks super, super healthy. And we actually have another melon right down here. If you missed the video where we slung these up, go back and take a look at that. Let's check this tendril out. I think the main stem is over on this side. So here's the stem attached to the melon, following that up. The closest tendril is right here. Green, not brown and crispy at all. So this one's staying on the vine too. So like I mentioned, the sunflower forest has now become the sunflower <laughs> jungle. <laughs> we actually had to uh, tie the sunflowers up to the fence a couple of weeks ago. And it's crazy. Number one, the squirrels, we watch them almost every day, climb up the stalks. These stalks are probably an inch or two in diameter, so they love to climb up and nibble off the uh, sunflowers that are drying up. But you know what? Once again, it keeps them off my tomatoes, so I really don't mind too much. And uh, it's going to be fun to see these flowers kind of uh, dry up and die off, and we'll save the stalks for growing something on in the future, maybe peas come the cooler weather. But man, do we ever love this little area right out here. One of my very favorite things about the August garden are the flowers. So many of the flowers are in full bloom now in August. The zinnias, the sunflowers, I'm gonna show you dahlias, my favorite in just a moment. But with zinnias, what you wanna do is to keep them blooming and to keep them nice and strong and sturdy instead of tall and lanky is trim them off 
right at where the uh, little leaves branch out and you will encourage a lot more bloom. So go back and watch our Xenia video we did this week for more info on that. But we gotta go up a little bit higher here, guys, and show you the dahlias. We've got cucumbers in here, tiny Tim tomatoes, but by far my favorite flower of the summer are dahlias. Let me show you right here. And hopefully you can get a good shot of these, but these are my very favorite all time because number one, they're red. Aren't those gorgeous? Yeah, they are. And it's your favorite color. It's my favorite color, but they're huge, huge blooms. Very tall plants, two to three feet tall, maybe even four feet tall, actually. But what you can do to help your dahlias um, keep blooming, to encourage more blooms, is you want to snip or deadhead the dahlias. Now this one, see how the lower petals are kind of starting to dry out? And here comes a Japanese beetle. They always <laughs> kind of attack my hair. They don't bite, but they're just yeah, really they scary are. sounding. Um, so anyway, what you want to do is deadhead the stem. It just means you cut the spent stem. Now you don't want to cut it way up here, because then you leave this kind of awkward stalk sticking up. You want to trim it by a set of leaves. So I'm going to go down here to this set of leaves. Snip here with a nice sharp pair of pruners. That will encourage more lateral branching and more blooms. Send more of the energy's plants, more of the plant's energy into blooming. And then I can take this into the house and put it in a little vase. It's kind of on its way out, but it's still gonna look absolutely beautiful. Isn't this gorgeous? Yes, it is. It's crazy pretty. And over here, Jerry, I don't know if you can get the shot or not. It's kind of in an awkward position too. Is a yellow one. Here, I'll kind of move it over this way so you can see. This one's also ready to trim. So we'll snip that off. And when we get to the other side of the garden, I'm gonna show you some even bigger dahlias that are so beautiful too. From the top of the hill back down to the bottom of the hill, I wanted to show you guys here the little shorty. We planted this much, much earlier in the uh, summertime, but little shorty's a three foot smart pots raised bed. Love it. It's great to pop up for your fall garden or just to add some extra growing space. But here we have a tiny Tim tomato. And at the beginning of the summer, this looked absolutely beautiful. But tiny Tim is a determinant tomato, which means that determinant plants grow to a set size. Tiny Tim's about two feet tall. And then they produce and start to die off. So you might be alarmed if your determinant tomatoes start looking like this. Don't try and save them. It's just part of the plant. So at this point in time, this plant can definitely be, um, everything can be harvested. This plant can be pulled out. And I've got some more tiny Tims actually growing in the house that will pop in here to take its place. So now's the time of the season, like I mentioned, where you kind of have to decide, what am I gonna leave in? What am I gonna pull out? Tiny Tims coming out. The other one that's gonna come out probably this week is this cucumber plant. Um, it's just kind of looking, you know, it's at the end of its life here. It's looking a little diseased, got lots of spotted leaves, it's taken a beating from the heat the past few weeks. So this will be coming out, but the good part about it is we planted as part of our late summer garden, some brand new plants at the base of the old plant, maybe a month or so ago. So as soon as the old plant comes up, we'll wind this one up the trellis and we'll have some beautiful new cucumbers uh, later in the summer or in the early fall. So you always wanna be thinking about what to plant next and then kind of plan ahead a little bit so you always have something to harvest in your garden. Now is also a great time, especially for your southern gardeners, to plant heat tolerant greens. You might remember the video we did on that. Look how the New Zealand spinach is doing. It's absolutely beautiful, kind of trailing over. This is a really good green to uh, saute in your scrambled eggs, um, pop in your smoothies, and it really loves the heat. It also loves the cold. So we had a little bit of an issue with our kale here getting eaten by some pill bugs or something like that. With kale, you don't have to pull it out. You just cut it off like that and it grows fresh new leaves. So this, this one was trimmed back maybe a week or so ago. So it should be growing some new leaves pretty soon. And you can grab my heat tolerant green seed collection and a little shorty to expand your growing space just a little bit over at calikimgardenandhome.com, 20% off with the code GARDENFRESH through Monday. So make sure you grab that and your fall garden seeds as well. So now's the time where you can, how this kale is kind of getting a little bit tall, a little bit bug eaten. This is a perfect time to cut these old kale plants off and get some brand new leafy growth. So don't pull them out, just prune them for new leafy greens. Now here in the 15 gallon tan smart pots, 
All of these over here are things I planted mid to late summer, so I have crops continuing through the fall. I love the tan smart pots because it's a nice natural color and it really blends in nicely to the landscape. But these are scarlet runner beans and there's flowers here. The heat might have kind of dried up some of these flowers this week, but we'll definitely still be getting some beans out of this plants, out of these plants. This is one of the teepee trellises from my, um, from my new book on raised bed gardening. Super easy to build with three bamboo poles. And then moving over into the next tan smart pots, we planted some, a brand new round of scallop squash. So when our early spring scallop squash dies off, we're gonna have a nice new little crop. These are growing beautifully in the tan smart pots. Um, they, the, the, the fabric is uh, aerated, so the roots love to air prune rather than circle around like they would in a hard sided container. But can you see there's flowers starting to form over here? So we should be having squash probably within a month or so from this plant. And moving right along, <laughs> planted a new round of tiny Tims about a month or so ago. We've got two plants in here plus some uh, basil. So we'll have a new round of those. And these are all from my late summer garden seed collection. Just gonna carry my little harvest basket with me throughout the garden because we do have a few things to pull off here. And like I mentioned earlier, now's the time to really reap the rewards of all of your hard work. You grew it. Now we're gonna harvest it, and you wanna make sure that you're eating all the garden fresh goodness. Now this eggplant, it's a black beauty eggplant, has been growing in here for two years now, believe it or not. It's gotten attacked by spider mites multiple times. I've cut it back multiple times. All these leaves here are speckled, which is a sign of the spider mites. And I've taken off the leaves several times, sprayed it down with insecticidal soap to help, but the spider mites are relentless and just keep coming back. But you can see there's, it's not affecting um, how the plant is putting out. There's probably 15 or 20 Black Beauty eggplants. Can you believe, Jerry, how many eggplants are on this? Yeah, it's, it's crazy. Huge. <laughs> and we've been making eggplant goat cheese roll-ups from these. We slice them up, grill them, spread goat cheese on it, some grilled peppers, and oh, it's one of our very favorite things. Look at the sheen on that. Oh yeah, it's nice and shiny, which means it's perfectly ready for harvest. Oh, I love these things. They're so delicious. And they're just one of the most Oops. beautiful vegetables in the garden. The fountain planter is where I really like to grow my peppers. It is the sunniest spot in the garden. They love the heat. But for some reason this year, a couple of my plants kind of died off. So I replaced them with some brand new plants. Now it is a little bit late in the season to start peppers from a seed. So I grabbed a couple of peppers from the garden center. Don't feel bad if you have to do that, you guys. It's more important that you're growing your own food. This I believe is a Fresno pepper. And then the one right back here is some other type of sweet pepper. I forgot the variety, but um, you can tell, you can see there's some little buds already coming up and we should be able to grow these throughout the winter time, although it won't quite be as productive because it won't be as warm, but at least we'll have some going. Now I'm gonna go ahead and take this pepper off. This plant I trimmed back pretty severely a few weeks ago, gave it a nice little mid-season boost, so we should be seeing some new growth. It just was getting kind of tall and lanky. The leaves were a little bit diseased like this one is here, so I thought that would give it a fresh new little boost, and hopefully we'll get another round of harvest out of it. Now here we have another massive sunflower plant. It volunteers here every single year. Sunflowers are huge bee attractors, so you have to grow them in your garden. But one way that you can keep them producing all summer is also by trimming them off. Um, the spent flowers, once again, trim them off right where the leaves kind of meet the next set of leaves reaches the main stem or meets the main stem. Just trim it off. It will encourage a lot more branching. This is a branching variety of sunflower. You can see how there's already lots more blooms coming on. So this just should still keep blooming for several months here in Southern California. Now I want to let you guys know it's about 95 degrees out here right now. So camera guy is doing an amazing job with the camera. We actually have our friend Dana on reflector. So we're doing really well here in the heat to show you guys our garden tour. However, I wanted to uh, have you guys check out the little shorty. Remember how we planted beans in here several months ago? Well, the beans, the heat took them out. They were just really at the end of their lives. So pull them out. And I want to encourage you guys to leave a few empty spaces in your garden. Fall gardening is coming up. You want to have a few empty spots for your cool weather veggies. So while I did pop some lily put zinnias in here, I'm going to leave it fairly empty so I have space for my cool weather veggies as the weather cools off. 
probably here in California, it'll be around November. So we've got a few months of warm weather growing yet. When I was planting my garden in the spring, I made the conscious choice to make this garden a cut flower garden, and I'm so happy. I've never done that before, and I'm so glad I did. Planted zinnias and dahlias in here primarily, and I'm absolutely loving it. I've nicknamed it the zinnia forest because the zinnias are going crazy here in August. They love the warm temperatures. They're a flower that you can grow all summer long. These, I believe these are the California Giants for my zinnia seed collection. So many beautiful varieties and colors of zinnias you can grow. The pollinators absolutely love this. When it's bright and sunny in here, there's just bees and butterflies all over the place. And I'm gonna have to get up <laughs> behind here in just a second and show you the dahlias. Um, this whole area in here, I planted these zinnias really late. I kind of tried to stagger the planting so I had blooms at different times. These are, they haven't quite bloomed yet, but these are the cactus zinnias from my zinnia seed collection. Really beautiful kind of frothy looking blooms, if you would. And we've got some little teeny ones here. I think these are the, are they the Chippendale zinnias? I can't quite remember their names, but I got to go around the back and okay. show you the dahlias. So come on in. I want to take you through the zinnia forest. The colors in here are absolutely stunning. It's I a nice it little in haven in the garden. Yeah, I do too. And I got to show you these dahlias. Oh, I am so hooked on dahlias. These are like the dinner plate size. And I'm definitely going to be growing more dahlias next year. The blooms are kind of starting to fade now, but man, are they ever amazing. There's some beautiful deep burgundy ones right over here. But before we get to that, look how tall these zinnias are. I mean, this is taller than me. I'm 5'8" and it's probably actually just about my height. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna be trimming these back so we get a lot more blooms out of them in the next coming weeks. But come on over here, Jerry, I wanna show everyone this deep burgundy dahlia. Isn't that gorgeous? That is. So beautiful. So let me know if you're growing dahlias, what your favorite variety is. And I really wanna be looking for some bigger sized dahlias next year. So if you have any recommendations, let me know. One of the most important things to do in August is really just to sit and relax and enjoy all the fruits of your labors. You spent all summer growing your beautiful garden. So take some time every evening to just chill out. Agreed. And we've been doing that almost every evening in the chill zone here. Really, really enjoyed it. So the hose link solar lights provide a really nice ambiance in the evenings. We can sit here, watch the sunset, look at the beautiful plants all around us really really have a great time super relaxing huh Jerry yes <laughs> so we did a little mid-season boost of our raised bed a couple of weeks ago we harvested everything and then fertilized it and we're getting a lot a lot of new vegetables already so definitely don't neglect that mid-season boost right down here we've got some brand new scallop squash coming on the squash was not here a few weeks ago and we've got lots more um, growing now now some really nice um, herbs in here some basil, and you, you do want to harvest your basil um, before it starts to flower because it gets a little tougher, tougher woody stems, changes the flavor once the flowers start to come on. But I do like to leave a few plants to flower for the pollinators because it really attracts the bees like crazy to your garden. Now moving on here through the raised bed, we've got a really nice crop of jalapenos. These are a nice mild heat kind of pepper. So we definitely need to put some poppers on the grill, fill them with cream cheese, bacon. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, it sounds so good, doesn't it? One of my favorite peppers of all time though is growing beautifully in here, just going crazy. This is the California Wonder. This one's in the raised bed kitchen garden seed collection. Would you look at the color on that plant? It's just absolutely vibrantly red. Yes, it is. And these are one of my favorite peppers to put in our eggplant goat cheese roll-ups. Slice them, grill them up, and layer them up with grilled eggplant and goat cheese. It's just amazing. And because these are such big peppers, they're also really good for stuffing. Thanks so much for joining us for the August Garden Tour. So much fun to have you along. I love these because they're a different kind of a format for us. So I get to chime in now and then, so that's fun. It's always fun. And it's, of course, it's always fun to uh, grab some harvest and we'll go have dinner right after this. So let me know what your favorite part of your summer garden is. I would love to hear more about it down below. And head over to calikimgardenhome.com. Fall is just around the corner. Cool weather is coming soon. So grab one of my fall garden seed collections. The Bring on the Pollinators Cool Flower Seed Collection is also a really good one to grab this time of the year. Get a 20% discount with the code GARDENFRESH and it ends on Monday, August 15th. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see, see you on the next, next video. video.